vectors, they are tangent to your surface everywhere. We can do, and this is the example that we did in the lecture, I will not do it in the same detail. Please guys go and review this part in the lecture, it's very important. The leave bracket between x and y is partial y, partial your coordinates. x, y, z times x minus the other way around, partial x, partial your coordinates times y. The result was negative z, 0, and x. This was the result. So it's that vector field, which I know for sure that it's tangent to your surface everywhere. This guy is indeed in the vector fields on the sphere. So these guys were vector fields on the sphere. So give me any surface. A surface that you can visualize, a surface that you cannot visualize. A surface that is really a surface, or a surface that is abstraction of a surface. It's, 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 it's something that just satisfies the definition of a manifold. It's not really a surface. Like what? Like the set of rigid body attitudes, SO3. Special orthogonal matrices. This is not, you cannot visualize it. It's not, it's not a surface in a hard dimensional space. But here is how the abstraction will help you. Given any surface of these, like I said, you can visualize, you cannot visualize, it doesn't matter. Given any two vectors tangent to the surface everywhere, this guy will give you a vector that is tangent to the surface everywhere. Okay? In mechanics, why are you making it a big deal? Because in mechanics, a vector field represents an allowable velocity vector. This is a direction where you can, you know that you can achieve velocity in that direction. Okay? So this is very important in mechanics and we will have you know, almost our entire course about this part, so I'm not given some time here. We'll talk about it in detail later. And we had uh, touched upon it in the lecture, if you have seen it, between roll and pitch and all of that. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far about these vector fields and these Lee brackets? Any questions? Jose? Okay. Well, first, the y vector field, shouldn't it be like 0, z minus y? What? Uh, I'm sorry, where is that? This one? Yeah. No, they don't have to. This is an easy. Uh, this is an easy yeah, way to construct. I mean, to, to be like according to what you draw, because it has no x component. It has what? It has no x component, and then it doesn't give you the result. I think. Well, which one are you talking about? Why? If you do the oh, 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 I'm sorry. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. You're 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 right. Let me let me. You're right. I, thank you. So actually here, this is in the yz, so it should be in the yz. Thank you. So this is actually 0 here, and uh, z. z negative 1. And the second one, what does this lead bracket represent? The second one, which is this one? No, no, I mean in general, what's okay. the concept of the lead bracket of x and y? What does this represent? I mean, well, I know it gives you an, a vector field and so, but what is that? Well, uh, so uh, geometrically, geometrically, it's so. Look at this. This is really the. This is really was how the Lie bracket emerged in differential geometry. So uh, we know that vectors are derivations. So we, people play with derivations, try to come up with a new derivation. And uh, even if you repeat this operation many times, it doesn't give you anything. Interestingly, it is just this subtraction that unexpectedly gave us a derivation. So from this point of view, it, it doesn't have that meaning, physical meaning as you expect has this geometric meaning, which is give me any surface and any two vectors, I'll give you a third vector that is always tangent to the surface. The point is, in mechanics and control, these vectors are admissible vectors. They are achievable. In other words, I have actuators that can move me in those directions. And I don't have an actuator to move me anywhere else. Maybe this is only my actuators. This knee bracket, which in control represents a nonlinear interaction between these two actuators will give you the ability to move along a new direction. Okay. And we will talk about that in, in much more detail later on. 
Yes, Scott. Does the vectors generated by the Libraki have to be linear independent with the... It doesn't have to be. Actually, here it's linearly dependent on x and y. It doesn't have to be linearly. If it's linearly independent, this is great. You really got something interesting to talk about. Why? Because if it's linearly independent, means means that it's independent. It means that it's new vector that you can generate motion along. Okay. So, uh, but this is not always the case. Actually. We, like I said, this is actually the spirit of the entire course. We will talk about this many times. We're just introducing how it started. Okay? And here I'd like to have some technicalities about the Libra. Any questions so far, please? If you have a question, just come up with it. So now a lead bracket, it takes two vector fields and gives you a third vector field, right? So it takes a vector in uh, the sky M or whatever, and another vector in chi M, and gives you a third vector. So give me two vectors, I give you a third vector. Seeing it this way, it tells you that this gives you a means to define multiplication. Multiplication on this guy. Because uh, remember, usually, even in Rn, we don't have a means to define multiplication between vectors. A useful means, at least, right? We don't multiply vectors to get a third vector. Here, it gives you a way to multiply two vectors and get... The multiplication is defined a little bit weird. Is that partial, the second partial coordinates times the first minus the other way around? It doesn't matter. You define multiplication the way you like. So this actually gives you a means to define multiplication on the set of vector fields. Which actually now gives this guy the structure of a Lie engine. Well, uh, first of all, what, what do you mean by algebra, please? It's not a big deal. Algebra is a ring, okay? So what's the ring? Remember, it's we can add and multiply. Obviously, we can add uh, vectors, we know that. And now here, we're, we're defining multiplication, so that's great. Uh, it's actually a ring without uh, identity, multiplication identity. So uh, algebra is a ring, and uh, it's also a vector space. So uh, what's a vector space? We can add. Well, we have the addition from the ring anyway. But we can uh, multiply by scalar. We have a scalar multiplication. Yeah, we know that. We know that we, we can multiply by scalar because these are vectors. We can scale the vectors. So it's a vector space. And it's a, it's a ring, it's a, it was a vector space, just it was a vector space. Now, having defining a multiplication, it makes it a ring, so together it makes it an algebra. But it's not any algebra, it's a Lie algebra. What's a Lie algebra? So a Lie algebra is an algebra whose multiplication satisfy the following rules. Multiplication, special multiplication that satisfy The following rule. What are the following rules? I will show you the, the rules on the Lie bracket itself. Okay? So first of all, linearity. What do you mean by linearity? So any vector field x comma y plus z. So this comma interpret in your mind as a multiplication. Okay? So this is as x multiplying y plus z. So you have it as x, y plus x, z, right? And you can, add, you can have scalars, fine. Coming out, because it's linear. You have skew symmetry. So d bracket of x and y is minus the d bracket of y and x, obviously from the definition we, from the way we're doing it, right? And uh, finally, Jacobi identity. 
what's the Jacobi identity? So you have uh, x with y and z plus, so this is second order of the bracket, plus, we do it the other way around, so z with x and y keeps circulating in that direction, so we have y, z, and x, we're just circulating, the result is a zero vector, okay? Actually, a nice example is R3 with cross product, right? The cross product, give me two vectors, and the cross product, you give me a third vector in R3, so it's an algebra, and the cross product, multiplication rule, satisfies these three elements, so it's a D algebra. Okay? Any question about that? Okay. Well, it's, it's not a very fancy thing, but we will use the term Lie algebra a lot. So uh, here is where it came from, okay? At least for this course. Okay. Okay, now we don't have much time, so I'll skip one part, we'll come to it later. The Lie bracket is actually is a measure of commutation. What do you mean? Okay. 